Today on What Does That Do? We're gonna be talking about automation. Thank you. Automation. We're gonna show you how we go from raw material to our finished part. That's gonna involve our work holding setup, our auto door, our robot setup, our stock holding, and then lastly, our programming and wiring. So when it comes to handling the raw material, um, we have these giant slides over here. Um, so whenever the robot pulls a part out, the rest of them slide down. When it comes to that slide, we tested a few different angles and right around 20 degrees was the sweet spot where the parts would still slide down and overcome that friction. And also it was light enough for the robot to pick up um, and move out of the way. Once the robot is in position to grab, we have these gripper fingers here, which were 3D printed. And they're controlled by an air solenoid, which means that when you trigger the solenoid, the robot grabs the part. Um, when it comes to this automation stuff, having a 3D printer is pretty much essential unless you wanna spend thousands of dollars on things that you could print um, in your own shop. And then these grippers are uh, pneumatic drip grippers that we got from Automation Direct. And again, great place for cheaper stuff um, that you would otherwise pay thousands for. So we have a solenoid hooked up to the robot that controls the door on the side here. Um, it's all pneumatically driven, which means that we have airlines running pretty much everywhere. Um, we found these Nitra rodless air cylinders on Automation Direct, um, which gives us a nice clean look on the side here. Uh, we also have these switches to let the robot know, hey, the door's open or the door's closed. In the event of something over here failing, we want the robot to know, hey, this failed. Do not try to bust through this door. So when the robot brings the material into the CNC, it'll load it into these AirVice jaws. Um, this is a vice made by AirVice work holding and it opens and closes with air pressure. So once the robot is done with this part, it will open the vise up, load the next part in, and keep running. The nice thing about these jaws is that they are made out of 7075 aluminum, so you can cut whatever profile you want in them. So for our Thalio PCI mounts, we cut this profile in it, so when the jaw's holding onto it, it holds the part nice and snug. So programming for this robot is actually pretty easy. In fact, Adam, why don't you come out and uh, we'll do a quick demonstration. Uh, okay. So go ahead and hold the teach pendant. We're gonna slide your hand in there. Very nice. All right. So right now we're in our programming workspace. Okay. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna teach it a move, um, right. an orientation move just to get it started. You're gonna teach it a grip position, which is just another move. Okay. Um, you're going to teach it an I.O., which means you're going to turn on the solenoid for the scripper. You can grab it. Yep. And then you're going to lift it up, which will okay. be our final move. Okay. okay. <laughs> I'll, try. I'll try. I believe in you. Um, so first off, let's go in here and let's hit move. move. Yep. Exactly. Okay. So we have a couple different options here. Right now it's asking for a TCP. Go ahead and click the drop down menu. And then we're going to choose TCP Gripper 1, okay. which is a tool that I set up previously. So that would be one of these grippers? Yes, okay. exactly. So I have TCP Gripper 1 and Gripper 2. Okay. Um, so right now we're jogging relative to the base, which is the base of the robot right here. Okay. Um, and for what we're going to do with this demonstration, that's perfectly fine. Um, if you want to set up a different feature, for example, these ramps, okay. you could teach it um, where the ramp is and the angle of the ramp using a plane. And then therefore, whenever you're referencing that ramp, the robot knows how to you know orient. That it's a 20 degree angle. Exactly. Okay. So right now we're going to teach it a waypoint. Okay, so that's just um, the destination. Exactly. So go ahead and click set waypoint. Set waypoint. And now this is going to be super simple. I want you to hold this button down. Okay. That's what UR calls the free drive button. It allows okay. you to move the robot. In free mode? Yep. Okay. 
So now go ahead and use your other hand to move the robot around and get it roughly oriented in a position to be able to approach that piece. Perfect. Okay. So that'll be good. You just need it rough. Now that we're done with free drive, go ahead and let go of the button and click align. What that's going to do is it's going to align the gripper to be straight up and down. That okay. way you can come straight down the piece. Go ahead and hold that button down. There you go. So you see the robot align itself. Oh, nice. Yeah, perfect. Continue. And then click OK. Okay. And that's it. You just tie your first point. Wow. And now, uh, yeah, a robot program is just a series of points. So you just do that over and over for different positions. Awesome. So the robot has digital inputs and digital outputs. Digital inputs are anything that's sending a signal to the robot, where the robot is receiving a signal uh, back. So for example, our switches um, or the machine sending a signal to the robot telling it, hey, go in and swap the parts out. That would be a digital input. And then our digital outputs are triggering of the solenoids. So when we're closing gripper one or gripper two, or we're opening the door, that's all gonna be a digital um, output. Inside the controller itself, um, we have these terminal blocks. Um, so everything that's wired is wired through these terminal blocks. And it's usually just two wires. Uh, you'll have your voltage and then you'll have your return here. So for, for example, the gripper, we have, we're triggering, triggering a solenoid. We'll unscrew these terminals, feed in the two wires for the solenoid and then screw them back in and then connect the terminal block back to the robot. When it comes to the robot communicating with the Haas, we're using an M code called M21. And what that does on the Haas CNC is it, it sends a signal out and it waits for a signal back. So the robot has a digital input for that M21 signal. When it receives it, it goes in and does its thing. It comes back out. Once the door is closed and that switch is triggered, it'll send an MFIN signal back. MFIN is the connector on the back of the Haas that tells the Haas, hey, we've received a signal back from our M21 and we can continue with machining. To be able to receive that signal, the robot is sending a digital out to a relay and then that relay is jumping two pins on the back of the controller and that's how the Haas is receiving the signal back.